So as you might be able to tell, I am actually in my car right now, and I am right in front of our beautiful church building right here at United Church in Walpole. And for the sermon moment um, now, I'm actually going to take you on a drive. Um, so um, as I am parked on the side of the road in this moment, I invite you to pray with me as we begin our sermon time today. God, I ask that you speak through me, and I ask that you speak in spite of me. And I pray that the word that is heard in the hearts and minds of all those who are listening and seeing and, um, and observing is your word for all of us and each of us this night, this day, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, here we are in front of our church. And as I alluded to from when I was inside the building, there's a lot of folks right here in our own community who are living really on the margins. And I have had the honor and blessing of ministering to them pretty much as soon as I started here at United Church. Um, but I can tell you that I have seen a huge increase in the needs of people right now in our own community who are without homes. Um, and they're mostly living in their cars. Uh, here in the suburbs, most of um, those who are homeless are um, in possession of a vehicle. And, um, and they're driving around our community right now. And so I want to take you on a little drive through Walpole. And as we drive through Walpole, um, I want to kind of um, let us drive um, almost as a prayer walk together or a prayer drive together. And maybe look at our own community with fresh eyes um, from the perspective of um, those who are most vulnerable right here amongst us. Um, and may we have the eyes to see, um, just as Jesus sees, the love and joy um, that we can be part of um, when we reach out and connect to folks um, in need. So here we go. So I'm stopped here at the light on Washington Street, um, and I'm right here next to the Cumberland Farms, um, and we are headed towards Route 1 right now. Um, and there's a lot of folks um, who are out uh, driving around right now, just sort of waiting for businesses to close um, and for parking lots to empty out so that they can find a place to park for the night. It's kind of funny being, um, being a pastor in your 30s in Massachusetts, uh, which is one of the least religious places in the country. I think we are only behind in Vermont in terms of how um, non-religious we are as a society. Sometimes I get the impression um, from people who aren't religious or look down upon religion that they think um, somehow that I have devoted my life to things that are unreal or things that are fairy tales. And kind of the ironic thing about that is that um, Ever since I became a Christian, and many of you all know that I wasn't raised Christian, so I became a Christian later in life. Um, ever since I became a Christian, I feel like my life has become even more real than it ever was because being a Christian and following the way of Jesus um, has put me in situations and 
put me in connection with a reality of life that I'm pretty sure if I weren't following Jesus as my teacher and uh, the one whom I have devoted my life to, I'm pretty sure that I would not be um, connected to the kinds of folks and serving the kind of folks in the ways that I do. So I hope that you all feel that way too, um, that whenever you make a decision to really get serious about following Jesus and really living out the gospel, um, making that be the hallmark and the guiding principle of your entire life, um, which is really what we're called to do um, in scripture. It's, it opens up the world in so many ways. And what I have found is that the gospel is not even so much something that I have to go and look for in the world, but more often than not, the gospel uh, finds me when I am really on the path of love that Jesus puts in front of us. When I am walking that path, or in this case, driving that path, or um, being in the world in the way that Jesus wants us to be open and receptive and justice seeking and loving and, um, and with a heart for the poor and the marginalized and those who are most cast down by society, when we're really living that way, um, the gospel finds us. And, um, and that is a great joy. So I've sort of arrived at my destination that I wanted to bring you all to tonight. And um, where I am is the Walmart parking lot of Walpole. And what some of you might know, but I suspect that many of you don't know, is that Walmart is one of the few companies that has it as a policy that um, people are allowed to park in their parking lots overnight. And that is true um, for Walmarts all across the country. And what that means is that Walmart is really home, or I should say the Walmart parking lot and the Walmart bathrooms and the Walmart um, groceries and pretty much everything that Walmart sells is a home for um, many, many homeless people in America and many homeless people in our own community. I'm sort of trying to park so that you can see where I am. Um, I'll go over here. So there's a lot of cars here that are kind of far away from the entrance and you might think that they are employee cars and some of them might be, but a lot of them are probably also cars of people who are staying here. I'll just stay here. You'll have to just trust that I'm in the Walmart parking lot. Um, but it's here that a lot of folks are living and it's here um, that folks are just trying to get by. Um, and many of them have jobs that they're going to um, and they're showering at gyms where they have gym memberships, um, but they can't afford housing um, and they can't afford to have a roof over their head, but they can afford a car, they can afford um, to eat somewhat, they can afford a gym membership where they can shower, and that's about it. Um, and these are folks who are just squeezing by. And this week, um, it just struck me um, how much um, this pandemic, which has made all of our lives so hard for so many um, people, how much harder this pandemic has been for those who we are ministering to um, in all kinds of ways um, who are homeless right here in Walpole or passing through. 
um, as they go from Walmart parking lot to Walmart parking lot, which is sort of what a lot of them do. Um, it's sort of like surfing the Walmart parking lots. Um, and it's, it's really heartbreaking. But I didn't bring you here just to make you sad or make you feel bad. Um, I brought you here to hopefully help you feel um, connected more deeply to the spirit um, of Mary and the spirit of Isaiah that we heard today in our scriptures. I think it's so profound and so powerful that, um, that God so clearly in those scriptures um, is portrayed as a God who is really on the side of the poor and the marginalized. And that depiction of God, of um, being for those who are most downtrodden, uh, as in our church we say the least, the last, and the lost, is something that um, has been dangerous throughout history, um, but also hugely inspirational. And I hope and pray that every single one of us um, can realize that these are not just words from 2,000 years ago um, that may or may not make a huge impact on our lives, but these are words that when you really put them into practice, when you really live by them, when you really um, decide that following God and following Jesus is more important than anything else in your life. Um, it means that you are invited into um, opportunities for transformation and ministry beyond what you could ever imagine.